Another way that we describe our data uh, through distributions, through tables, which we looked at earlier, are through graphs, right? And so this is a common way of looking at data because it's easy for uh, others to comprehend. And so we revisit the idea. And again, idea will be coming, uh, will, will be a constant throughout the course is this idea of a distribution. And so you're going to be asked to describe the distribution of data, right? Or a variable. And when we ask that, we are asking for you to tell us what the shape is, what the center is, and what the spread is. We'll have to talk about those terms, but keep that in mind. Keep that in handy. Socks, shape, center, and spread. Um, important in terms of looking at the distribution of a uh, quantitative variable. And so one way we start is through a table, frequency table here, right? And that gets converted into our first graphic of the course, which is called uh, a histogram. And histogram looks like a bar graph. The key difference is that you have um, on the bottom on your x-axis or on the axis on the horizontal axis, you have quantitative values. You have these classes, right? that break it up and then you can then see, then you draw the bars in, right? It's a visual representation of the distribution of a quantitative variable. And so that's what it would look like here. And of course, this first time we could do it by hand, but we use technology to truly build it because the data sets are, would be too big, right? And so what you can see here is the distribution. Remember, right, we described the distribution with shape, center, and spread, but really what that is is what are all the possible values the variable can take? How often do those values occur? So you can see the values are between $7 and $14.99, and then you can see how often they occur. And so that's how we would build the histogram. But I want to remind you, we will be using technology to, to build that. Now, here was a histogram with a class uh, from $7 to $8.49, $1.50, right, the class width. Here's another one, the same data with a class width of $2 instead of $1.50, which we have here in this class width. And so the data is going to look similar, but the distribution um, may appear slightly different just because we changed the class width. And so you need to be uh, uh, understand that it's the same data, but the distributions or the histograms could look slightly different, even though the data is identical. Right. And so you can see we end up with a different uh, uh, set of values and our bar graphs are slightly different based on um, our class width of two dollars in this case. And so looking at one more example here or uh, a problem you could try is what would a histogram with bin size five, right? Class width five, starting with 10 for the following ages of people on a bus. And so here's the distribution. Right here are the, all the possible values. How often does each occur? And so then you can see what this histogram um, looks like here based off of uh, the bin width of five. I decided to show you also what the classes could look like here. And so you could see how you would write it, but this is just one way. Remember, there are multiple ways to write those classes.